Who died, who done it, and who else was there? Well, here's a really interesting find. I'm marching along here and I see a blood spot. And here we have entrails. You can see that the body of the victim laid here in the snow as it's melted. Here in the snow, it melted more. And again here, and its entrails are left behind. Can you identify the victim? This area is heavy with trails. And over here we have an active den. Yes, I'm going to identify this as a large opossum. It's hard to make out the tracks. But this one appears to be... This one can be a bit tricky. Tracks are often distorted in the snow. Who died, who done it, and who else was there? Well, we know that an opossum was there because we saw that strange shaped front paw print and the other print, which is the back paw with the elongated print with four toes facing forward and one toe facing backwards. So that was obvious. But there was that other print. Well, I don't think it was a raccoon because raccoons, although their prints are very similar in size, this print was distorted by the snow. Also, I believe raccoon prints have longer toes and a more elongated print. So I don't think it was a raccoon. Well, we know that a groundhog or woodchuck den was right nearby, but how often are woodchucks out during the winter? Probably not often. On a warm day, they might poke out and go back in. But they're herbivores. There's no reason for it to be near a dying body or a dead body. So who was there? Well, a woodchuck den, a carcass, and splayed toes like this in a very even pattern with fat toes and kind of a thick print. That leads me to the striped skunk. So I believe it was a striped skunk that was there along with the opossum. So who done it? Well, I got a little piece of footage to show you yet. This was a raptor that did that. So here's how it went down. Our victim was going along in the woods when a raptor, a red-tailed hawk, grabbed it, took it to a spot on the ground and fed on it. Then, leaving the carcass behind, an opossum and a striped-tailed skunk which often dens up in woodchuck holes, showed up to feed on the carcass, and one of them dragged the carcass away. The question still remains, who is the victim? Study the entrails and the fur one more time. And here we have entrails. Well, it could have been a gray squirrel, but it wasn't. Seeing that gray fur can be misleading. The cottontail rabbit often has gray fur mixed with brown in the wintertime. You can tell by the thinness of that fur that it was a rabbit rather than a coarse furred gray squirrel. Also, looking at the entrails is a dead giveaway. The entrails showed round, even-shaped droppings. Gray squirrels often have irregular shaped smaller droppings, where these nice round, evenly spaced, uniformly sized droppings were the obvious sign of a cottontail rabbit. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this 
little video and uh, I hope to do more things on tracking and signs of animals. Some of them will be on this channel but others will be on my Good Squatter 1 channel. I am doing a short series on tracking on the Ghost Squatter 1 and I hope to build it and get into more detail as I go along as time allows. Peace. Oh, one more note. Raptor feathers are both illegal to sell and possess so I will be returning these to the woods promptly. Peace.